Moeller's chart, how plant nutrients interact with each other. First published in 1953 by Derek Mulder in the publication translated to minor elements in fruit culture. This poor guy, unfortunately, seems to, a lot of the information about him seems to be lost in the journals of history. But what it's trying to do is it's showing how different nutrients interact with each other. For instance, calcium has an effect on magnesium and in turn that can have an effect on potassium's availability. In aquaponics we often see iron deficiencies. That iron deficiency could be an indicator of too much phosphorus in the system. Likewise we often see potassium deficiencies in aquaponics and that could be an indicator of too much nitrogen in the system. Let's break this chart down and take a look at it. Nitrogen, if you haven't seen my nitrogen cycling video, take a look, check it out. I'll put a link for it right up in here. Nitrogen is the, one of the major components in chlorophyll and amino acids. Increasing nitrogen lowers the amount of potassium and boron and copper while creating a demand for magnesium, molybdenum. Increasing that creates demand for more nitrogen. Nitrogen is number seven on our periodic table here. Iron is involved in the synthesis of chlorophyll. It is an essential in the maintenance of the chloropathic structures and their function. Number 26 on the periodic table. By increasing iron, we can lower the amount of phosphorus in the system, the amount of available phosphorus in the system. But what's interesting here is if we get too much phosphorus in the system, we can tip the balance and decrease the amount of iron availability in the system. By increasing zinc, calcium, manganese, again phosphorus or copper, lowers the available iron in the system. Increasing potassium creates demand for iron. Number 42 on the periodic table, molybdenum. It's used in the production of molybdenum enzymes used to regulate nitrogen and the conversion of nitrate into proteins. By increasing it, we create demand for nitrogen and copper. Now, if you remember, nitrogen is used for making amino acids and amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. Number six on the periodic table, copper, is used in many enzymatic activities in plants and for chlorophyll and seed production. Increasing nitrogen or Phosphorus can decrease the amount of available copper. Increasing copper decreases the amount of available iron. And manganese, molybdenum, creates demand for copper. Phosphorus, this is a very active one. Number 15 on the periodic table is used in energy transfer, photosynthesis, the transformation of sugars and starches. It is used to move nutrients and transfer genetic characteristics from one generation to the next, which means it's part of DNA. Increasing phosphorus creates a demand for magnesium. It also decreases the amount of available potassium, calcium, zinc, iron, and, and copper in the system. If we increase calcium or iron, it can also have the reverse effect by lowering the amount of available phosphorus in the system. Manganese, number 25 on the periodic table, is used in photosynthesis, respiration, is used in nitrogen assimilation, pollen germination, and resistance to root pathogens. Increasing it creates a demand for potassium. Increasing calcium or copper lowers the amount 
and increasing the amount of manganese in the system lowers the availability of iron. Magnesium, number 12 on the periodic table, is used for carrying phosphorus, phosphate metabolism, cell division, protein formation, enzyme systems, and respiration. Increasing or decreasing magnesium or potassium can have effects on each other by raising and lowering their available amounts. Increasing calcium lowers the amount of available magnesium. Nitrogen or phosphorus creates demand for magnesium. Number 19 on the periodic table, potassium, this is a busy one, is used in the movement of water and nutrients and carbohydrates. It's also involved in enzyme activation and regulation of photosynthesis. Increasing potassium lowers the amount of boron and can have an effect on magnesium's availability. Increasing calcium, nitrogen, or phosphorus lowers the amount of available potassium. Increasing potassium creates demand for iron. Increasing manganese creates demand for potassium. Number five on the periodic table, boron, is used in cell wall formation and stability biological membranes, moving sugars, and pollination and seed set. Raising calcium, nitrogen, or potassium lowers its availability. Number 20 on the periodic table, and a very busy one, calcium is used for building cell walls and membrane and activate specific plant enzymes. Increasing calcium lowers the availability of zinc, iron, phosphorus, manganese, magnesium, potassium, and boron. Increasing the amount of phosphorus decreasing the availability of calcium. So if you get a lot of calcium in the system, your pH is gonna go up and that's going to lower the availability of all of these nutrients. Last but not least, zinc, number 30 on the periodic table, is used for the metabolism of plants, enzyme function, and ion transport. Increasing zinc decreases the availability of iron. Increasing phosphorus and calcium lowers the availability of zinc. So that's the spider's web known as Moller's chart. I think it's absolutely amazing how all of these interact with each other. It's just, it's, 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 it's incredible to me, absolutely incredible. What do you guys think? If you got anything out of the video, like, share, and subscribe. If you got something you'd like to add to this, go ahead and you know make a comment down below. Give it a thumbs up. I, that would be really helpful. Have a great day, everybody.